Uh, Maura, hello, welcome. Uh, it is great to have you here. Thank you so much, Anna. It's really a pleasure. Let me introduce you to start with. I'm very, very excited to dig into the, some of the questions I had prepared. So maybe just to give a quick overview. The reason why I think your story will be interesting is for the wonderful variety in your That's right. career <laughs> journey. So you've been working across various countries, Italy, UK, USA right now, across various sectors. We have consulting, we have pharmaceuticals, energy, manufacturing. What else? Did I miss something? No, I think you covered uh, almost everything. Uh, I've also worked uh, in uh, McDonald's. So, right. you know, <laughs> food. <laughs> food as well. Exactly. exactly. And then uh, the wonderful story of the different functions that you've led throughout your career. And I think this is, from my perspective, the most interesting part because I don't often see the transition that you have made moving from HR into business leadership. So you began your career in HR in various functions from talent acquisition and learning development, and um, talent well, development. Actually, I started in the consultancy and it was mainly in the business area. And then I moved to HR. So that that's correct. Uh, uh -huh. You know, telecom with Vodafone and then McDonald's. So different uh, industries, as mm -hmm. you said, different role. I would say a combination between uh, business Mm -hmm. and uh, and hr i think uh -huh. that i've already you know I, i've always got a kind of dual soul probably <laughs> even if right now i feel uh, more aligned with the with, with with the business role so it was business first then hr and then back that's to right. that's uh, right leading that's business. right yes because uh, in hr you've reached as high as vice president hr that was your most senior role and then you moved again to business, so you led sales as a vice president and strategy as well. And currently your role is a vice president of sales at Prismian Group. Yes, that's right. Uh, we are talking about uh, North America, power distribution mm -hmm. team, so energy, as you said, mm -hmm. mainly working with utilities and the renewables customers. Mm -hmm. I'm responsible for uh, innovative and sustainable products on one side and renewables on the other one. So I'll ask you a little bit more about your current role a little bit later, because that's um, an interesting part of this conversation in itself. But starting from the beginning, uh, yeah. starting from your leadership journey. So what have been the key milestones, would you say, in your leadership journey? If you looked back, it's been over 20 years, your career. If you look back, what have been those key situation events that shaped or moved you onto a certain path that led you to today? That's a very interesting question. Sometimes I look back, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I, I think about, uh, you know, the overall journey. I think that uh, the consultancy was uh, the first step. Why? Because I had to manage uh, different projects with customers at that time and combining uh, numbers on one side uh, results uh, stressful, uh, you know, time delivery. So I believe that uh, this uh, this was the first step. OK, so ensure time delivery, quality and uh, building the right uh, relationship with the customer. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the first step. And then for sure, you know, the second step was uh, when I started managing people. Mm -hmm. That's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes you think that it's normal, something mm -hmm. that you can do overnight. That's not true mm -hmm. because uh, I had the experience uh, to manage people much older than me and much mm -hmm. more experienced than me. Mm -hmm. And I was also a woman. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of talking about uh, gender diversity, but this is this is what happened, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to sometimes manage myself mm -hmm. in order to be able to manage others. Let me explain what I mean. You know, sometimes uh, when you have to to manage just yourself, you can be emotional sometimes and you can you can get angry and you can take time and go outside and and, and debrief. Sometimes when you manage others is different mm -hmm. because uh, you cannot be so emotional. You have to stick to the role. You have to manage yourself, uh, even when you are not happy and give the right guidance uh, and ensure the delivery, ensure the quality, ensure the result. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So this was uh, probably the second step. Uh, and then obviously when you increase the responsibility, the complexity of people uh, management increases together. But uh, I believe that this was the second important step. Mm -hmm. The third one, I will let you make some comments. The third one was um, when I had to combine a senior role with different cultures, with different roles. Mm -hmm. Wow right? Mm -hmm. Completely out of my comfort zones. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. mentioned UK, US, and I've traveled a lot. So I also got the responsibility for the Nautics for a while when I was in the pharmaceutical company. And when I got the responsibility for strategy, I was completely out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. uh, with people looking at me like, uh, okay, so now let's see what you are able to do. Mm -hmm. And it was strange to me. And, and I was like, okay, I'm the boss, so you should show me <laughs> something, mm -hmm. right? And then you realize that nobody has to show anything. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's more around what you can do together and uh, offering uh, to your team your strength. Can you see mm -hmm. my point? Yes, and for yes. sure, you know, coming from HR, for example, mm -hmm. you mentioned that, helps a lot when you have to deal with people internally, externally with customers, when you have to manage influencing, talking mm -hmm. about leadership style. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what um, what I did. So mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, the third step in my leadership journey was more around patience uh -huh. and uh, give time to myself and give time to others mm -hmm. to understand what I could offer. That uh -huh. sometimes is not necessary skills, technical skills. Is more around the managerial skills. Uh -huh. So not easy, not easy for me, not easy for others, yeah. but extremely rewarding. Yeah, extremely yeah. Extremely I mean, rewarding. Uh, not easy. I mean, we keep talking about leadership all the time, and I think techniques change and evolve, and we continuously learn. I, I'm having similar conversations very frequently, and, and people can go on and on and on because it's not technical right it's it's not right. it's, it's not black and white every person is different every culture is different uh, every individual person that you have ever come across will be different and will be react differently to whatever you oh, do yes. and so you have to be constantly adjusting and adapting to your environment so uh, so to summarize so consulting gave you a really good technical foundation and yes. foundation of how to deliver against results and then your first management experience was where and when? Was uh, in Vodafone when uh -huh. I was hired as uh, HR business partner and then uh -huh. HR manager in technology. Yes, uh -huh. this was okay. my, that was my first managerial experience. Uh -huh. yes. So that's the first managerial experience. And then yes. you mentioned the number three, the, the third event. So that was, uh, was it uh, in the UK while at AstraZeneca when you, for the oh, first well, time, were in an international context? Or yeah, was I did the... No, well, it was, uh, you know, when I moved from uh, Vodafone to McDonald's, uh, mm -hmm. I increased my responsibility. And this was the first uh, time that I was so exposed uh, to the international contest. And then back to the consultancy in EY. And, and again, big, big, big team, mm -hmm. you know, over 20 people reporting to me. And again, interesting experience because I was also responsible for uh, Mediterranean team. So uh, I, I think that this was another interesting step. It was more around uh, managing uh, people cross country more than the complexity of the role itself, because again, technicality help. OK, so when mm -hmm. when you move in, in, in an area that you know quite well, it's easier some, somehow. So I had the opportunity to be more focused on uh, on people management and then uh, AstraZeneca as you said I was in Italy for a while with a managerial role as well and then I moved to uh, UK and it was in HR for the first period and then uh, in strategy this is the third step I was mm -hmm. mentioning right mm -hmm. so the first for the first time I was completely out of my comfort zone having uh, a very senior role managing people and leveraging on uh, you know my ability to learn let mm -hmm. me say, uh, you know, more than uh, on technicalities, because uh, that role was uh, quite new to me. Having a consultancy experience for sure helped, but it uh -huh. was new. It was new. Uh -huh. OK, so I have a few follow up questions. So just oh, to perfect. help someone <laughs> who would want to uh, make a similar step. So someone starting maybe from from your second 
key milestone Seven. in your, in your yes. leadership journey, leading people for the first time. What were the biggest misconceptions that you had before you first started leading people that you found out were wrong? Looking for people or managing people like everyone was like you. Mm-hmm. Can you see my point? So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I was having myself as a reference point, mm-hmm. mainly. Uh-huh, when you uh-huh. have to deal with others, uh, mm-hmm. you cannot start, you cannot necessarily start from yourself mm-hmm. because people are different. Mm-hmm. And that's the beauty of that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I was applying my mindset, my mm-hmm. way of working to everyone else. That's mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. true. Mm-hmm. So this this was one of the main mistake, a lot of mistake for sure, but one of the main, at least at the beginning, Mm -hmm. because uh, I was more focused on myself, Mm -hmm. probably, probably also because I was a little bit insecure at the beginning, uh, more than on others. Mm -hmm. So when I stopped being so focused on myself and, and when I was more interested in getting to know others and leverage on their strengths, this is where I got the main improvement. Mm -hmm, Because mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to leverage on the team, on the differences of the team. And this is not just theory, this is reality. Mm -hmm. And improve myself Mm -hmm. and uh, provide a better outcome. So that was the main lesson learned for me at the beginning. Uh, You understood for the first time that it was all about the people that you are managing. And it's crucial to understand what their strengths and weaknesses are and how you can leverage those to get the best result out of the team. Which translates it into into best result for yourself, of course, as a leader, because you are assessed as a leader for your ability to bring the best out of your people. <laughs> That's right. Default, That's right. Which probably, uh, yeah, probably people have the big misconception about when they first enter that leadership role. Were there any specific techniques that you used to help to transform your your leadership? To, to evolve your leadership? Um, actually, you know, I got the opportunity to be part of many different assessments. Mm-hmm. This helped me a lot. When I talk about assessment, uh, I'm talking about, uh, obviously, make uh, a self-evaluation mm-hmm. as a first step, but also listening from others mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, getting feedback from others. This was extremely important for me because there is always a misalignment between what you think and what the other people see about mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, at the beginning, it was, uh, you know, it was, wow, uh, mm-hmm. there is a gap. I didn't mm-hmm. expect that. And, and then I realized that there was a gap. And with some people, more than than others. Um, obviously, you know, the assessment, the, the feedback you ask is anonymous, but if you build a good relationship with people, you can even ask to mm-hmm. them. And this is what mm-hmm. I've learned, you know, mm-hmm. along my journey. So I think that this was extremely important for me. This is what I would recommend to everyone, having someone external mm-hmm. that can help you and assessing your strength. I'm more talking about personality more than, you know, technicalities because I believe that you can learn anything. And I think I'm a good example (laughs) of that. But you need to work on yourself Uh in order to become more effective, a better manager, and you need to keep listening from Uh from others. So that's probably the main uh, uh, suggestion I would share with others. Probably not easy to hear certain truth for the first time, isn't it? (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I don't know, for some reason, but you have the feeling that you know already everything about yourself. Uh Uh But that's not true, right? Uh Uh So that's not true because, um, you know, maybe people see things that you don't realize and this is where you can start working a little a little bit on it's um lots and lots of studies talk about how the ability to self-reflect self-awareness they are strong indicators of uh, good performance in organizations and good leadership in organizations. And there are other studies that talk about how self-awareness helps you to make better decisions, to perform better, to bring better performance out of your teams, et cetera, and et cetera. So it's helpful. It's various 360 type of assessments and psychometrics and all the type of personality assessments that help to understand who you are, how you behave, how you communicate, why your strengths, why your weaknesses, and just put a mirror in front of yourself. Oh, yes. And reflects what you actually thought. You know, sometimes you like what you see, 
<laughs> because you, you said that you are in front of the mirror, right? Yeah. So you like what you see sometimes yeah. and you don't like <laughs> <laughs> what you see, you know, other times. So that's that's an interesting experience. And I think it's only natural. I mean, you have to hear it for the first time. I think every single person in the world have gone through that. Every single person who have had any sort of feedback from someone else have gone through that. There were certain things that you're like, yeah, yeah, I know it's true. I'm, I'm good at it, for example. But there are other <laughs> things right. where you're like, uh oh, and, and uh -oh. just want to. <laughs> Warning. <laughs> that cannot be true, but it is true because <laughs> what about yeah, yeah. What I've yeah. learned <laughs> is that if people see that, mm -hmm. is, it is somehow true. Can you see yeah. my point? Perception matters mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And when you are in a company, I, I worked uh, always, well, since the beginning in very big company. Mm -hmm. And okay, different industry, different contexts, different countries, mm -hmm. but um, everywhere I saw that uh, what makes the difference is the perception mm -hmm. you create around you. And I don't necessarily like that, but that's a reality. Mm -hmm. Okay, perception is important. So if people see something about you, you have to work on that. Of course, <laughs> that's, of that's, course. that's a reality. Of course, of course, because in the end, you won't be able to influence another person if their perception is in a certain way. It's it's it doesn't matter what you think. It's if their perception <laughs> is different, then that's how they're going yeah. to act or behave. And then, um, so how did then this translate into evolving your leadership style? How did your leadership style evolve, you know, from those initial days to today when you're a more mature, more experienced, more effective leader? You said an interesting word, more mature. Mm -hmm. That helps mm -hmm. a lot. Okay, so at the beginning, I was for sure younger, no doubts about it. <laughs> and uh, I was probably more worried of demonstrating my value and more focused on, uh, as I said, myself and the performance, the perfect performance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now it's so different. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, you know, because I'm more mature, I believe, mm -hmm. and because I'm a mother, and mm -hmm. this is this is another experience that changed a lot mm -hmm. my leadership mm -hmm. style. Now I'm much more relaxed. So sometimes um, I don't have to push for things to happen mm -hmm. because you learn. I've learned along the journey that sometimes you have just to wait. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't that person uh, mm -hmm. a few years ago because I kept pushing in order to get the results I wanted. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And this was also part of my leadership style, right? I was mm -hmm. pushing everyone in order to get what we needed to deliver. Mm -hmm. Now it's different. So we still get the results we want. That's not the point. But the way in which I achieve them is different because mm -hmm. sometimes you can get the same result just waiting. And I'm not I'm not saying that you have to wait forever, but to me, the point is always to find the balance between when it's time to push and when it's time to wait. Mm -hmm. This was my big learning. Sometimes you have just to wait, keep, be patient for a while mm -hmm. and wait for the right time to push. Can you see my point? That was uh -huh. so important for me and so far away from my personality. <laughs> I mean, having worked as a headhunter for so many years, uh, one of the questions I always ask is how has your leadership style evolved over time? And every single time I hear, I used to be more hands-on, now I'm more hands-off. I used to be more controlling, now I'm more... <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Now I leave people more space. I think it's a very natural way of, of developing your leadership for every for every single person and could you give me a very specific example of how this would translate into some of your early experiences so so when you were younger in your first management role you would want those results immediately and you would ask for them immediately yeah, and yeah, whereas yeah. now it's, uh -huh. it's more around the pressure mm -hmm. you put pressure even when it's not needed so if we had the project to deliver Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the, let's talk about uh, a team of five or six people. Mm -hmm. I kept pushing for that. It mm -hmm. means that uh, it was probably more my way to control 
everything and everyone mm -hmm. because I like uh, and I, I still like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to have a plan and to keep uh, everything under control. But uh, it's, it's part of my personality. Uh, I'm, I'm a great planner, so mm -hmm. I try to plan everything and uh, and I try to plan everything in advance in order to avoid the uh, rush at the mm -hmm. end. And, uh, and that, this principle is good overall, mm -hmm. even when you manage a team, except uh, if uh, you push everyone too much under pressure. Because in this way, the impact was, and it happened to me, I create a difficult situation within the team because people, you know, were so focused on get things done that uh, they weren't talking each other anymore. So the alignment was completely lost mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the effectiveness mm -hmm. lost as well. Mm -hmm. So um, th this, is, this is a concrete example. So today I would manage that situation very differently because uh, uh, you know, even if I like planning, I usually plan uh, things uh, knowing strength of people much better mm -hmm. and uh, understanding that sometimes people need to find their way to fix problems, mm -hmm. their way to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And I can step in only if it's needed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the being uh, having everything under control is my problem not others problem so i need to manage myself i need to get the information i need on time but i need to leave other people managing their time i can just share the guidance expectation uh, have follow-up meeting but uh, putting pressure every time every day is not the best way to work together mm -hmm, together mm -hmm, that's my mm -hmm. point so to summarize if you were giving an advice to someone who is who is now uh, coming into a leadership role what three key skills should they develop should they start thinking about developing to be effective well i think that the first skill is um, listening okay ask to the team what they need i started telling people what to do. That was the wrong starting point. I think that the, the right starting point is, okay, ask them what they need so, because it's a good starting point. You know, get information at the beginning. The second would be organize and plan the, the work uh, properly, but having uh, always uh, the opportunity to step in at the end because in this way you know that you are not in rush and you can give them give your team the opportunity to manage stuff by themselves mm -hmm. and the third point is around be always accessible mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and available uh, it, this is part of my dna so it's easier for me to be accessible to everyone and to adjust uh, the, the way in which you manage the relationship uh, with uh, your stakeholder. Mm -hmm. But uh, I know that it's not easy for everyone. So my suggestion is, uh, you know, if your team members know that you are accessible, they can come to you if they have an issue. So it's mm -hmm. not really something that you have to worry about because it's something that they know and they manage with you when uh, when is needed. That's really interesting insight, I think. And it's, yeah, it's again emphasizing the importance of soft skills, isn't it? You, of course, need the technical skills as well. It's oh, of course, short. of course. But, but it depends. Uh, it depends. I, I agree. But uh, probably because I'm now in a more senior role. So um, technicalities, I've learned that technicalities are definitely important. But you can learn technicalities. Uh, you know, I'm still studying right now and, and I, I never stopped. So uh, um, I think that uh, learning agility has to be part uh, of our DNA for sure. But uh, when we are talking about being a manager, a good manager, this is where soft skills, in my view, make the difference. So I'm going to move on to a slightly different angle now. Okay. Uh, your transition into a completely different role from HR okay. to sales to strategy. And you said it was it was quite a key, again, milestone in your career. You were completely, what the words were that you used, you said you were out of your comfort zone, right? Oh, yes. New role, oh, yes. new team, completely. new personalities. 
how did you deal with this? What was your ways to, to manage yourself, to manage others in this situation? Again, what were the most important lessons you took from this experience that maybe you could share with others who maybe are preparing for such a change or would like to <laughs> step into such a change? Well, let me say that uh, the most challenging change happened when I moved here in the U.S. and uh, when uh, I was uh, a VP of HR in Milan, our headquarters, and then I moved here in the U.S., in North America, covering uh, a sales role in a very technical area, okay? You mentioned energy. In You know, we as a company, Prismian, is uh, a cable maker. Okay, so I had to start studying cables mm -hmm. and all the details related to cable. Not being an and engineer, coming from not pharma. being an engineer, that's mm -hmm. correct. Coming mm -hmm. from pharma, uh, being uh, having mainly an economical background, mm -hmm. but and coming from HR. <laughs> exactly. So I had to overcome a lot of bias because mm -hmm. people are looking at you like, uh, oh my gosh, she comes from HR. So. Why? Uh -huh. But for sure, people uh -huh. are not used to see this kind of change. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And I understand why. Because mm -hmm. it was, uh, Anna, it was super difficult. Mm -hmm. I cried. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, honestly, th this was mm -hmm. literally what happened a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. Even if I asked for this move and I got uh, my boss, so the chief HR officer of Prismian, extremely supportive. And even if I, I, I have, uh, you know, the CEO here in North America, again, extremely supportive. But when you have to deal with the such big change, mm -hmm. sometimes you cry. And I did. Mm -hmm. I did mm -hmm. more than once. So mm -hmm. I understand that people look at you like, uh, uh, you come from a completely different world because it is, it is mm -hmm. very different. Mm -hmm. And then it depends on how you are. So this kind of chain back to your question is something that uh, I would recommend mm -hmm. only if you are very motivated because it's going to be challenging. Mm -hmm. It's going to be challenging, not impossible. And I'm, I'm an example. So it's something you can do, mm -hmm. but you need to be extremely focus on where you want to get in a few years mm -hmm. because otherwise it's, uh, it can be difficult. Um, I'm sure, you know, many times we hear about uh, diversity and inclusion and we usually talk about gender, we usually talk about uh, LGBT and we usually talk about many different things, but this is also diversity. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yes. I can tell you that this kind of diversity, so when, when you move from a role to another, from a country to another, wow, this is this is when you see all the angles of yourself. Because mm -hmm. I had to learn cables, as I mentioned. I had to deal with a completely different culture. I was lucky because I come from an international mindset and I studied in international schools, but still difficult because, uh, you know, you have to deal uh, with a new role, with being uh, already in a senior role. So people expect uh, advices from you. Mm -hmm. So it was a combination of technicality on one, line, on, on one side, and I had to learn uh, as quick as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I shouldn't show that sometimes I was struggling mm -hmm. because the team cannot see that. Can you see mm -hmm. my point? They can imagine mm -hmm. that. But you, you know, mm -hmm. if they ask for a question, you need to be able to provide an answer and an mm -hmm. answer that makes sense. Because it's a senior role, you have to have certain level of credibility and you have to be able right. to provide advice and you're dealing with customers who are very technical. Right. You're dealing with all the functions within your company who are technical. I don't know, probably product management, probably operations, probably some other teams that you have to collaborate with. Yeah, supply with. chain, operation, yeah. plants. Uh, we have a lot uh -huh. of plants uh, here in, uh, in North America and generally speaking, uh -huh. and the whole company. So, and, and people, people and then know you your past, develop, and, right? and then you have to develop your own teams, right? So oh, you are right. to be the example for them. Uh, uh, that's right. And, that's and right. Learn. How did you manage? I How had no you? idea, Anna. <laughs> I did it. Um, I think that uh, smiling sometimes helps. Uh -huh. uh, having fun helps a lot, uh -huh. Uh -huh. helps a lot, uh -huh. and um, and stop uh, trying to be perfect, okay? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. uh, this was difficult for me uh -huh. because uh, I usually set the expectation very high with myself. Uh -huh. So I changed so much that at uh -huh. some point I, I said, okay, I cannot be perfect for sure, 
and by the way, I'm still learning. I'm still mm -hmm. in a learning journey, uh, but uh, let's start somewhere. And so I had um, the opportunity to leverage on a great team. And, and that's another point. Mm -hmm. I was lucky because I learned in the past, in the past, how to leverage on the team around you. Mm -hmm. So people who know better than you, mm -hmm. some stuff. So you can uh, involve them. You can learn from them. You can uh, get help mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to combine all these things I've learned in the past and uh, make them uh, part of my new journey. And I was extremely patient with myself. Mm -hmm. Can you see my point? That, yes. that was uh, the first time that uh, I did it. And I liked it a lot. So I was like, OK, I, I gave myself the right time to learn. And honestly, it was for sure faster than, mm -hmm. than what everyone expected. But this was the approach that helped I me guess, a lot. I guess the more senior you are, the more you have to befriend your own ego, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> because oh, because yes. the more dependent you are on all the people yes. and the more you need to ask for help. And the more you have to leverage more people, whereas I guess in more junior in more technical roles, you <laughs> used to be in the producer of the great work, right? And the, oh, yes. the more oh, senior yes. you progress, you learn that it's not your own output that gives the results, but it's what you can leverage from other people. That's right. And I was discussing with, a, with another colleague about um, the managers, mm -hmm. the boss. The bosses you meet uh, in your journey and I, i've been extremely lucky because um, i got quite tough managers along the journey but uh, i got the ability the opportune and the opportunity at the same time to build uh, a very good relationship with them so i got the opportunity to leverage on my strength on one side and to learn on the mm -hmm. other side because by the way we all need uh, to get trust from uh, our managers and uh, but you also have to be able to build this trust can you mm -hmm. see my point so it's mm -hmm. a combination of both parties give trust and get trust mm -hmm. um, and that was extremely lucky so when you have someone that believes in you it's helpful for sure uh -huh, uh -huh, for sure uh -huh. You've had great managers, and so that's it. were they role models for you? Were they models yeah, they, of for the different, type of manager? Yes. Uh -huh. For different reasons. Uh -huh. For different reasons. Yes. For different reasons. Yes. So I I still remember my first manager in McKinsey. He told me, "Oh my God, Maura, you need to to understand that numbers are everything." Wow. And I was like, "Oh my God, that's not true. Actually, it mm -hmm. is true." So it is true if you want to work in the business area, mm -hmm. even if you want to work in HR. So mm -hmm. numbers are important and, mm -hmm. and numbers can help you to build your storytelling mm -hmm. and uh, numbers can help you to show your results. So mm -hmm. it's a stupid thing, mm -hmm. but uh, and it's a technical thing, but it was so important because uh, he was uh, so straightforward uh, in uh, every day in giving this feedback to me that is now part of my DNA. Can you see my point? Mm -hmm. And the, mm -hmm. I usually look for numbers to understand the story behind. And, uh, and it comes from, from, from him because he explained that to me and he pushed mm -hmm. in order to make me able to see the business through numbers. And that, yes. that's mm -hmm. so important. That's so important. Just to give you an example and then, mm -hmm. you know, many others. But this was something that I still remember. Uh -huh. I guess lot. that's the common language between all the functions, right? No matter what you do, no matter what what you want from your peers or managers, uh, you know, if you need new resources, if you want to start a new initiative, if you can say the story through the numbers, you'll be able to win hearts and minds of everyone because in the end, that's, that's that will be the common goal, right? We all want to as part of an organization, we all have to make the organization more profitable, you know, bring more sales revenues. So if save costs, whatever it might be, it's a common language that everyone will speak. And that's that everyone right. Will understand. That's right. That's, that's right. Um, and it's also important, you know, to build on the right numbers. Mm -hmm. Numbers mm -hmm. themselves uh, don't mean anything mm -hmm. if uh, you don't look at numbers in a certain way. 
So, mm -hmm. so that's. But anyway, I, 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 don't, I don't want to talk too much about that. But it, this was an important learning mm -hmm. for for me, and it was very, very far away from my style at the beginning, and is now fully part of my daily activity. Uh -huh, so uh -huh. that's that's an interesting, and I like it by the way a lot. So, so a uh, final question around this very, very interesting transition that you have done. You said yes. it was so challenging. Would you have done it again if you went back to that 100%, same decision? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two hundred percent. Yes. Amazing. Because uh, because it's me. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, and I like uh, what uh, I do like what I'm doing right now. I have a clear path uh, regarding where I would like to be. It doesn't mean that uh, I'm gonna get there. Okay, mm -hmm. this is not something that only depends on 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 me. But uh, I think that uh, whatever I'm gonna decide in the future, this experience, this last experience, uh, is gonna make the difference because mm -hmm. it has been uh, so challenging that I truly believe that. Uh, Anything can be done as long as uh, you have uh, the right motivation and the right attitude, okay? Mm -hmm. Being positive that at some point you will figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Finally, I just wanted to ask you about your current role. Mm -hmm. Just to get a little bit more color into what it is like to work for a company like Prismian. Uh, because again, it's a very exciting industry, right? You mm -hmm. uh, are looking to achieve net zero by what year, did you say? Oh, well, for scope one and scope two is uh, 2035 uh, uh -huh. and scope three is 2050. But this is this is just one piece, like uh -huh. a very important one, by the way. Uh -huh. But um, let me say that, well, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we define ourselves, and I love this de definition, energy transition enabler. This is mm -hmm. why we play such an important role even on sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And being in the US right now, uh, because I'm also responsible for uh, sustainability here in the US, is uh, extremely interesting because you have to help um, your customer even on the sustainability standpoint. What does it mean? Um, in some cases, I deal with uh, an industry and with uh, utilities that uh, care about net zero, but maybe they don't know what to do and how mm -hmm. to reach the targets that, by the way, are becoming very important here in the US as well. So there is an opportunity to partner with customers. And this is this is one of the parts I love the most, because obviously I, I sell cable, I work with the customer, we make profit for sure. But there is also a way in which you can partner with them mm -hmm. and help them to build together a better world. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not something that uh, we have to do, but this is something that we want to do mm -hmm. as a company because we mm -hmm. are, um, you know, market leader and, uh, and you know, we, we feel the responsibility to do that. And we like mm -hmm. to work with our customer mm -hmm. in this direction. That mm -hmm. means uh, offering uh, tools uh, that can uh, help them uh, in the CO2 emission reduction, circularity, um, recyclability. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really an a combination between innovation mm -hmm. on one side and uh, and partnering and working with them for a mutual commitment on uh, on sustainability on the other side so i love that um so we are extremely concrete and 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 focus on that so we do want uh, to play our role there uh, i'm conscious of time i would love to ask you uh, i think a lot of more questions <laughs> I'm conscious of time, so I think we'll have to end this here. Okay. <laughs> but I might okay. invite you for another episode. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm always happy <laughs> to talk a little bit about uh, about something that can help somebody else. That I, I think nice. there's lots. I think there's lots that can help. I think there's lots food for thought. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>